key switches are the most common tool we have for working with multiple articulations with our virtual orchestra instruments, but they can be a giant pain, at least by default. So let's talk about four ways we can make them work better in your templates, including moving them down to the very bottom of the MIDI range below the piano, where they won't conflict with the real notes of any instrument. Hey folks, my name is Eric. I'm a composer and software engineer. On this channel, we go deep into tools and templates to help you with the especially technical bits of film TV and game scoring. And using articulations effectively is such a huge part of writing orchestral music, whether that's for the concert hall, studio, or the virtual orchestra running inside your computer. Which brings us right to tip number one, which is to actually use key switches in the first place. Now, this seems like a no-brainer, but it's not just about knowing how. It's about making the time to set up and learn your sample libraries. When you're in the middle of a project and all you have time to do is drop in a few specific articulations onto their own tracks, it's pretty easy to fall into this trap of treating each one like a separate synth patch. Rather than... a real orchestral instrument, which is going to expressively vary articulations within a phrase. A little bit of a toy example, hopefully I wouldn't have written that first part, but I do think it is kind of easy to get stuck on something like a spiccato track. And there's nothing wrong with that if that's what you're going for. But I think there's this kind of universal rule in life. If there's friction in the way, if something is hard, we are going to do it less often. So let's just try to make using articulations as easy as we can for ourselves. When you load a preset that has some key switches built in, but don't take the time to set up your DAW's articulation features for it, you'll end up with these really annoying key switch notes mixed in with the real music, and probably have to keep pulling up the plugin interface to see which key switch does what. Honestly, half the value of these DAW articulation features is just documenting for us right here in the project what all the articulations are and what we have to push to get each one. And this tip is especially true for giant libraries that have dozens of articulations. I still have so many libraries that I have bought, but I'm not really using often enough because I just haven't had that perfect block of days free in my schedule to go in deep. I'd seriously think about starting off with just a few of the most important articulations to get yourself going. Or if you know you won't even have time to do that, consider starting with what somebody's already built up for you. The most complete set of articulation presets that I know about is Babylon Waves Art Conductor. Now these are not free and I don't use them myself, but I know a lot of composers who do and really love them. So if they're set up in a way that you like, take a look because this could save you a huge chunk of time. Okay, so one way or another, we're going to use key switches, but we then quickly hit this problem of which range of notes to use for those key switches. And I'll show you why I think a better answer than any range of notes we could pick here is to instead use this range of notes for key switching. And the key to this idea is that we can plug in two or even more MIDI controllers into our computer. And most modern DAWs will just merge everything we do in all of them as if it was all coming from a giant Franken keyboard. Even if you need a portable laptop setup, I would probably try to find the smallest, lightest, cheapest MIDI controller I could and bring that around with me too. And this is nice because I know that my articulation key switches will always be right here, and I don't have to push octave shift buttons uh, or play in a different spot depending on which instrument that I'm using. Quick side warning though, make sure if you get a compact keyboard for this purpose that it actually shifts down all the way to these lowest notes. Turns out this uh, little Keith McMillan thing I showed you two seconds ago doesn't. So yeah, make sure of that before you plan to use a keyboard like this. And by the way, you don't have to use a piano style controller. You could use any MIDI controller hardware that can produce notes like a drum pad or something like what I use with various knobs, sliders, and buttons. And then I program these buttons to emit those very lowest key switch notes for me, which I can then hit with my left hand. But we still need a way to make sure each library's key switches will all use the same lowest notes. And that's what the title tip here is all about, because the easiest way to get that consistency is to always move your key switches down to the very bottom of the MIDI range below the standard 88 key piano. Tiny bit of MIDI theory for you here. The MIDI spec gives us 128 possible notes, 21 of which are below this bottom A of the full size piano. And that's usually about the lowest sounding pitch that we ever have to work with. Let's go through a little example of how to set this all up. So when you first load the this first clarinet from the Berlin Woodwinds Revive library. By default, its key switches are down here in the first full octave of the standard keyboard range. But if we instead load the contrabassoon, it has real sounding notes down in this range. 
So the library has to put its key switches somewhere else, which it chooses to do up here in this top octave. This is just annoying because now we have to remember where the key switches go, depending on which instrument that we're using. So there's two ways we can fix this problem. First approach is to adjust things within the sample player plugin when it lets you. Most sample libraries will give you some interface to individually assign or just shift the whole range of key switches somewhere. In this library, I can keep hitting this little arrow next to KS. There we go, those key switches are now at the very bottom of the range where I have programmed these buttons and so they will now key switch for me. By the way, what we're working with here is what I'll call sample player controlled key switches because the switching is happening here inside of this sample player plugin and all these articulations share the same input MIDI channel. But there's a second type of key switch and that's when the control happens a layer higher up inside of our DAW. So let me reset this contact preset back to how it loads by default and I will show you a technique that works even when the sample library doesn't let you customize key switches directly. So I will quickly make a new expression map, which is what we call the Cubase flavor of articulation preset, but other DAWs have basically the same structure, so you should be able to adapt to this technique pretty easily. And our first articulation is legato, so I'll just put this in. And I just typed the rest of these in, but I haven't configured how we will trigger them or what they actually do. For my logic friends, you can start the equivalent articulation set by typing in that same list of articulations in this middle tab. So the how we'll trigger them side, Cubase calls remotes, and I will use remote key switches here, and this default mapping is going to put them down in the very bottom of the MIDI range, which is what I want. Instead of remotes, Logic calls these switches, which you can set up in the first tab. Quick note that these octave numbers are different than Cubase because Logic lets me configure my preferred standard where C4 is middle C, and then that makes the lowest possible MIDI note C negative one. And because I have these controller buttons programmed down in that range, these will now switch between those slots. Only problem is they don't work yet because we haven't taught the DAW what to do for each one. Little Cubase specific detail, I went ahead and created an articulation that exactly corresponds to each one of those sound slots I typed in before. I will talk about the subtle distinction between these things in a future video, but this is about the simplest model and it's what I actually like to do in practice. So we can just focus on when I push one of these DAW remote key switch buttons, what do I want to have happen? And I want Cubase to send a note on to the sample player plugin. Let's also pretend that we are stuck with those key switches in the range that they loaded within that contact preset here in this low octave of the standard piano. So the first legato articulation is that lowest C. So I filled in the rest of these articulations and now these DAW key switches should actually work. And that last step, Logic also calls output in this third tab, which completes the equivalent articulation set. And this technique of DAW controlled key switches works even when the sample player plugin doesn't use key switches. Instead of a note on, we can send a MIDI CC controller value or program change, or what's usually my favorite approach because it gives us the most control is changing the MIDI channel we are routing to within a multi. So we've now customized the range of notes that we use to trigger our key switches with, but that is not the only thing we can customize. You'll probably end up developing your own preferred workflows with all of this, but let me just give you a handful of things you might wanna think about in this last tip. Let's talk through a few different iterations that we might take setting up a library. So first up is just starting off with the basics. Maybe you don't have the time to set anything else up, or maybe you don't have the RAM, in which case definitely pay attention to legato articulations, since those are usually the most memory intensive. But with just these five pre and butter articulations, we can write a good deal of music. Another thing you might wanna do is put your favorite or at least most commonly used articulations first. That way these key switches are reserved for those and anything more rare is higher up in the list. So for me to get to any articulation beyond the first eight, because that's how many buttons my controller has, I have to record or program a note in and then change the articulation afterwards. So here in the key editor, I could set this to repetitions. So I can still get to those, it's just a little bit more work, which it's okay, because I don't use those as often. It can also be nice to keep similar articulations together. In other words, to group articulations by type. So here I have all of the long articulations and then all of the short ones after that. And within each, there's some sort of logical structure. With shorts, I'll start off with the shortest standard short with spiccato, 
then a medium staccato, and then a longer staccato. So just whatever kind of logical ordering makes sense to you within each subgroup. The only annoying bit with them grouped this way all in one is that my bread and butter short articulations are now past those first eight, so they're harder for me to get to. So what I prefer doing is splitting up my long and short articulations onto different tracks, each one with their own articulation preset. And this has a few nice workflow benefits. Two I'll talk about here. One is just there's now more articulations easily available at my fingertips, so I I have eight different longs I can get to quickly and then eight different shorts I can get to without having to add more controller buttons. And the other has to do with articulation layering. So this works best when each individual articulation is loaded onto its own separate MIDI channel, but we can still use key switch tracks, which my previous video went into depth on how to set up. I'll link to that at the very end of this one. But with that, we can then access the most common layering right here using only key switch tracks. And that is a short note layered on top of a long one. And that's not only for mouse click programming, I can also play or record in parts using that kind of layering. Let's say I wanna take this medium staccato and layer that together with a long note. If I arm both of these tracks, I can then play or record something in. So this is pretty close to what this instrument would look like set up in a real orchestral template of mine. I try to be somewhat consistent with the articulation ordering and groups that I use across different sample libraries, but I don't stress about getting it exactly the same since there's so much variation from library to library. I am pretty consistent though with sustain and then legato being my first two key switches on a longs track and something like this with the very shortest note first and then getting to medium and longer lengths. So I can kind of reach for the first few articulations blindly and then after that I can look over to the expression map tab to see what I have to work with. So those are four key switch related things you might want to think about the next time you're setting up a virtual orchestra project. I originally had four more tips planned for this video but I decided to split those off so look out soon for a follow-up that'll go a little more into depth on some advanced features like negative track delays, attributes versus directions, and how this all works with the music notation process. You might make completely different choices than I do but I'd mainly encourage you to think about how the different alternatives here affect your composing, editing, and mixing workflows. If you haven't seen it, here was my last video about how to set up key switches in a way that still lets you control individual articulation tracks within the same project. I hope something here was new for you. Thanks for watching and happy scoring.